Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hi guys, how are you doing, if you don't have your oil, grab your oil, we'll wait, if you have your oil, say I have my oil, I have my oil, <laughs> say I have my oil, say I have my oil, if you have your oil, if you don't, we'll wait, we will wait, hallelujah, good evening, Handa Sura Mashati. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying the scripture tonight. Isaiah chapter 60. Hey, Crystal. Isaiah chapter 60. Hallelujah. Manda sukutaya shandurabasute. When you have your oil, say, I have my oil. I have my oil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, I got my oil, Deneen. <laughs> hey, Destiny. When you have your oil, say, I got my oil. You don't have your oil, we'll wait, we'll wait. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. You might want to get a pen and a paper, and of course, you already have your Bible because we pray scripture. We pray the scripture, we pray the scripture. Hallelujah. Manda sotaba soko reba city. Letebeko sotora da baso. Koshendi ora baso ko shetebe. When you have your oil, say, I have my oil. Manda de ro soko de be kandaria kureba shiti. Lete sotora da baku ramaba so retebe kushi. God, we give you glory. God, we give you glory. God, we honor you. We honor you. When you have your oil, say, I have my oil. Manda sotora baso ko shi. Andeo koda basataya. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 60. Hallelujah. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 60. Listen, if it, if I'm all over the place, who cares? Just like rock with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> this time has been so charged uh, spiritually. I mean, I have not seen such angelic activity um, as I've been seeing this season like, not y'all know, I don't like sounding deep, and I don't believe in doing all that deep stuff. It is not necessary. <laughs> it is not necessary. We don't have to sound deep. We all rock and walk in the Holy Spirit. We all rock and walk in the supernatural. Um, you know, I wish I could properly convey what I see for this time. I wish I could. Um, I can't. I cannot communicate properly what the Lord is showing me about the coming out of this season. Are you guys taking notes? Are you guys ready? Because listen, you have to pray into this for yourself. I understand that I walk with the gift of faith. Not everybody has the gift of faith. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, we're all not going to have it. You know what I'm saying? We can earnestly pray for it. I understand I have the gift of faith and I'm also very pragmatic. I don't believe in, uh, giving, hyping people up. I don't believe you ain't got to, you know, I, I, when I pray for you, I'd rather you not fall down. I'd rather you not start screaming and shouting. I'd rather you listen and try and test the word of the Lord. I'd rather you, you know, remember what God is saying so that you know when God is performing his word because you heard it and you remembered it and it, it was sown into your heart or you had to chew the fat and spit out the bones, whatever. Um, but um, I, I, I would that I could, you know, shake the people of God and open their eyes for them to see uh, the time that we're standing in. And so, listen, today I just opted out of some things. And so if you send me certain things, if, you know, certain things are on Facebook or social media, I'm opting out. I'm just saying no, because it goes against what God is showing me on the days that is to come. It goes against what I'm talking about when I say it goes against, it goes against my assignment. It goes against your assignment. So I can't opt in to that because I've got to opt in to an assignment. I've got to opt in to a particular authority and a particular particular anointing. And so I've got to stay on that track because I understand what's being presented parallel on the other track. That's just not my portion. That's not what I'm supposed to agree with. That's not, I can't opt into that because I've been called to be a, a, a type of and shadow of the hand of Jesus in that. I've been, I've been called to deploy the name of Jesus in that. So I'm called out. And so you've got to shake yourself and you've got to ask yourself, am I called out? 
out of that? Am I an ambassador? Am I a governor? Um, let's see. Um, am I governed? Even though I'm in the earth, am I of it? Um, if I'm in the earth, am I governed by it? Or have I been called in this time to be an ambassador, though I have to live in this particular time? I don't have to have the same experience or shared experience because I am of a different group. I am of a different grouping. I am of a different uh, 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 spirit. I am of a, a different clan. I am of a different family. And so uh, even though these things are coming, we ha are here or what's here. What is your here? What is your here? In other words, where do you sit? Where are you seated? Because that's going to delegate your experience. Where you sit, where you choose to sit, it is going to delegate your experience. Come here. Let's go to a crowded arena. Let's go to a crowded room. If I sit in the back, if I say my sit, my seat is in the back, if my seat is in the middle and it's crowded, then my view is going to be a little skewed. My experience is going to be a little skewed. I'm going to have to dodge the heads in front of me. I may have to stand up the whole time. I may have to look at the big screens that are around because I cannot see for myself what is happening. And so where you choose to sit in this hour, it is going to delegate your experience. And so you have to say to yourself, okay, God, where am I supposed to be seated? The Bible says you are seated in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that you are seated in heavenly places. And so I shake you in prayer. I'm praying for you. I shake you in prayer in your face. I'm I'm shaking you. I have you by your collar and I'm screaming in your face. Where are you sitting? Where are you seated? I'm, I'm screaming in your face. What are you doing? I'm screaming in your face. What are you saying? I'm screaming in your face. What are you agreeing with? What are you doing? You are of a different family. You are of a different sound. How dare you merge your sound with the sound of the earth? You are of a different harmony. You are of a different melody. Your sound when you pray, your sound when you worship, it sounds like the sound of heaven released upon the nations of the earth, the, the sound of deliverance, because this is the thing. The Lord says that he surrounds us with songs of deliverance. Could it be that God set you, not seated you, but he set you in the earth as you're seated in the heavens at the same time so that he could surround a zip code and it will become a Goshen, so he could surround a county and it will become a Goshen, so that he could surround a state and it will become a Goshen so he could surround a nation and it could be a Goshen. Could it be that God set you so that he could cause the sound of deliverance released from himself. He says, I sing, I release. There is a song of deliverance that is always continuously around you. He is the wraparound God. So could it be he said that I set you around a people that does not name the name of God. I set you in a country that does not normally and naturally naming the name of God. I set you in a zip code that does not naturally and normally name the name of God. So that I could be the wraparound God around you. And when I'm the wraparound God around you, I'm the wraparound God in government. I'll be the wraparound God in the economy. I'll be the wraparound God. Oh God, God is saying, would you, while I set you there, would you release a sound of worship? And it will be the sound of grace and mercy sent to a people who cannot open their mouth because they are scared. God says, I set you, I set you in a place that cannot lift their hands because they don't know how to. I set you in a place that releases a sound of fear so that you could release a sound of faith because they don't know how to. What are you doing? Hallelujah. We've got to say, we've got to hold ourselves accountable in the place of worship. We've got to say, well, 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 well this looks crazy, God. It, this looks crazy. The economy, it looks crazy. This is this you. This looks crazy. And so God says, you've got to trace me in my word. You've got to understand the pattern of me. Stick to the pattern of me even more than the release voices on various platforms. Are you chasing? Are you following after? Are you walking with the pattern? 
pattern that I've set forth in the word? Are you tra- 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 tracking me? Are you tracing me through the scripture? I am the same God that I was yesterday, today, and forevermore. I stick to my pattern. What you see me do in Genesis, you also see me do in the book of Revelation. You also see me do in the book of March 2020. You will also see me do in the book of September 2020. You will also see me be the same God in January 10th, 2021. I stick to my pattern. My name is my name. My character is my character. I have no variableness or no uh, no changing. I change not. I am the God who changeth not. My word is my word. Yes, there are depths and yes, there are dimensions. Yes, there are, are, are. You can go deeper in and have a wider understanding, but my precepts are my precepts. How I move is how I move. Are you tracking me, says God? Hallelujah. Are you tracking me? Where are you set? And so what has God said to you? And so I'm shaking you as one of your intercessors. I'm shaking you as one of the sounds. I'm shaking you as one of the equippers in the earth. And I'm saying to you, what did God say to you as you were moving out of 2019? What did God say to you about your lineage? What did God say to you about your assignment? What did God say to you about your anointing now all of a sudden we're in the third month of 2020 has that all changed can any of the word of the Lord be thwarted does God change his mind concerning what he said or did his word when he said his word is his word still set if God is not going to and fro with what thus saith the Lord then why should we are we holding on to what God said in 2018 about 2020 are we holding on to what God said in 2019 about 2020 are we holding on to what God said. Are we enforcing it? Are we moving in it? Are we not swaying to and fro by what is being poured out in the earth? We serve the God who created heaven and earth. We serve the God whom the cosmos is still hanging on by his word, his thoughts that he released in the times of Genesis. We serve the God who is sturdy and who is settled. And if the sun is still hanging in the sky, so is your word. Hallelujah. If the stars are still hanging in the sky, then the word of the Lord is still hanging in your life. The word of the Lord is still hanging on your DNA. The word of the Lord is still hanging on your lineage. What are you doing in that? How are you maneuvering in that? How are you praying through that? Are you even swayed by what you see out here? Come on, guys. Hallelujah. If he is the same God, if he is the same, so some things I'm not even going to opt in into anymore. If they shut it down, they shut it down. Bless be the name of God. My na- my life is not shut down. The promises of God are not shut. Come on, guys, are not shut down. God, I see it as giving me a window of opportunity. Listen, if you want to write this check and take it to the bank, the Father is saying to us that when I bring everything back up when I power up the nations. When I power up the nations, they will shut it down. But God says, I'm going to power it up. God says that I will do a thing in the dark. Come on, guys. When they shut it down, it's just the hand of God shutting some things down so that he can do a work in the obscurity. Come on. The mysteries of God. The obscurity of God. Call unto me in this time, says God. And I will show you the great and the mighty that they know not of, that you know no, not of, but God says, even though you walk through a thing that would be the mysteries of me, know this, it is well lit, know this, it is well lit, know this, it is well lit, says God. And so when the nations power back up, the father says there will be some powers that change hands. When the nations power up, the father says systems as we know it shall be over. When the nations power up, God says that you will walk into some things. When the nations power up, God says you shall see what shall come into fruition. Back in maybe 2005 and 2010, God says I spoke some words unto you. I put a word over your life and I let your ears hear the word of the Lord over your life and you have grappled 
grappled with that thing and you have wrestled with it because it just doesn't make sense. Oh God, how are you going to take me from here to there? When you release the word, it seemed like everything spiraled out of control. It looked like everything spiraled downward. You gave me a word, God, and everything got out of whack. Bless be the name of God. God is saying that's exactly what was supposed to happen. I was undoing a thing. I was undoing a life that was handed to you and you said yes and I said no. I said that's not your life. I said that's not your destiny. I said that's not your destination. And so since I released the word, I have been releasing you. I have been releasing you from that thing that I never built you for, saith God. God says by hook or by crook, I will get your feet upon the path that I have laid out for you. And so I begin to release a word that begin to disrupt where you are. Could it be that you're now standing in the lane, you're standing in the territory, you're standing in the minute and the moment, says the Lord, where I am getting ready to unveil, I'm getting ready to lift the curtain, I'm getting ready to open the door, I'm getting ready to take the roof off, I'm getting ready to show, I'm getting ready to make a sound, I'm getting ready to say surprise as you walk into the room that I have made room for you, says God. What are you doing at this time? What are you doing with this time, says God? Could it be? Could it be? Oh, Anise, oh, Anise, here you come with that stuff. Here you come with that stuff. Anise is so, you know, optimistic. Anise is always, you know, she's not a doom and gloom. No, I'm with the pattern of God and where God goes. Anise is always repenting for the nations, but I'm moving with the pattern of God. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. This thing has been in my gut for a couple of days, and so now we're getting ready to walk through it. So get your oil, take the top off because you're getting ready to anoint yourself a couple of times. And when you anoint yourself, you are anointing your lineage. You are anointing your assignment. You are anointing the people that you are to assemble with. Come on. You are anointing your hands for every assignment that you're getting ready to walk into. You're getting ready to anoint. You are the point of contact. The oil is a prophetic act. We're saying to the king of glory tonight that there are a people who believe what thus saith the Lord. God, we're still in the seat of belief. God, we will not be moved. God, we will not be shaken. God, we will not be taken to and fro. God, we're not going to fall off. God, we're not going to blow with the wind. God, we are anchored. God, we are anchored. God, we are anchored. And that's what this is about tonight. We are in worship and worship is anchoring us. We're in the presence of God and we're saying to God, you are our anchor. Jehovah, our anchor has anchored us. The ancient of days has anchored us. And so let the wind blow. Let the wind blow. But there is a mightier wind. The wind of the Holy Spirit. There is a mightier wind. There is a wind that eats up every other contrary wind. There is a peace that will eat up every contrary wind that comes to fight against the word of the living God. The living word from the living God is what you live. The living word from the living God is what you live. You better write that down. The living word. Come on. We are not a people who exist on dead words. A man shall live, man shall not live by bread and by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It is the living word. It is the living bread. It is the bread of heaven. And that's what we live on. That's what we exist on. That's what we eat off of. That's what we're nourished by. We are not a famished people. We are not a starving people. We are not an emaciated people. We have the word of the Lord. You are not starving for a word. You are not running to and fro in the earth looking for God. You have him in your house. You have him in your belly. You have him in your storehouse. You have him in your dreams in the name of Jesus. Come on guys. We're in Isaiah chapter 60. And I got excited. We're in Isaiah chapter 60. Come on, let me know when you're there. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, verse 1. We know this, we read it, we, we quote it, but we're about to get some understanding about this thing in, in prayer tonight. Are y'all there? 
Are y'all there? Let me know when you're there. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. Arise, shine. Your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, right? Arise and shine for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. All right. So let's put a pin drop right there. We understand if we're going to pray this, we have to pray with what wisdom? We have to pray with context because we are praying a principle. And so if a chapter opens up with a verse one, we understand that this was not written uh, initially and this was not written officially. Come on, guys, with book chapters and verses. There were no verses. There were no chapters. It was word upon word upon word upon word. And so let's go back to chapter 59. So turn your page backwards because we have to be able to string together. If I am to arise and shine, my light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon me. What is this talking about? What is God saying? Because I don't want to miss out. It seems like I'm in the middle of something. Arise and shine is the middle of something, right? So what comes before it and what comes after it? What comes before it and what comes after it? I want to eat the whole word. I want to stand in the whole word. I want the whole portion. Is this making sense? All right, so we're we're gonna go back to Isaiah chapter fifty nine. Honestly, you could you could go all the way back up to Isaiah uh, fifty three, and you could go all the way to the end of the book because it's all together. It's all together. So we're going to start with. Um, Verse 18. We're going to start with verse 18. Are y'all there? Isaiah 59. I'm starting with verse 18 because we have to go to Isaiah 60, verse 1, and then we've got to understand what are we standing in the middle of. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay, recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, which is the east. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Verse 20, and the redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of your mouth out nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed saith the Lord henceforth and forevermore you have your oil. You have the top off of your oil. I want you to anoint your tongue. That's why I'm, I'm going to read this again. And I want you to anoint your tongue. This is the precious promise of the Lord concerning you. As for me, this is my covenant with you. As for me, the Lord is speaking. This is my unbreakable, unshakable promise contract that cannot be broken with you, says the Lord. My spirit is upon you and my words. Let's look at this word in Hebrew. It is debar. Y'all hear me talk about this all the time. And my advice, my answer, my books, my business, my cases, my causes, my commandments, my chronicles, my errands, my eloquence, my glory, my effectiveness, my oracles, my parts, my provision, my promise, my power, my purpose, my reason, my report, my request, my sayings, my sentences, my signs, my what I my speech, my song, my talk, my tasks, my tidings, my words, my works. That's every word for word. All of that has I, he's put in your mouth and it shall not what depart out of your mouth. All of that God says I have put in your mouth and it shall not depart out of your mouth or your seed or out of the mouth of thy seed seed says the Lord from henceforth and forever. I pray y'all are getting this. So you're anointing your tongue on the promise and the premise 
of the covenant that God said, my spirit is upon you. And my words and everything that is the definition of this word, not what I just read, but what it means to him, I have put in your mouth and your seed's mouth. Are, are your kids tripping? I have put this in their mouth. And in the seeds that you will never meet, God says, I have put in their mouth my word. And my spirit is upon them already. And my spirit is upon those who are tripping already because a covenant I have with you right now. That's, that's verse 21. Now go to verse uh, chapter 60, verse 1. So you've anointed your tongue. This is what God says. Now in from that verse, you transition to arise, shine, for thy light is come. Thy light is come. The We know this, this word light is illumined, uh, the light of life, the light of prosperity, the light of instruction, the light of knowledge, the light of wisdom, which comes from what? The word of the Lord. Arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse two, this is March 2020. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Put a pin drop right there. Let's look at this word darkness. This word darkness in Hebrew, uh, it means ignorance. It means destruction. It means misery. It means sorrow. It means obscurity. It means wickedness. So wickedness, obscurity shall cover the earth and gross darkness this is not the same word. This is a different word in Hebrew, even though it's using the same word. This word for darkness is 06205, and it means a cloud, heavy or dark cloud, gross and thick cloud shall, is, is the people, it's covering the people. So death, destruction, obscurity covers the earth. And a gross, thick, Heavy cloud covers the people, but the Lord shall rise on you and his glory shall be seen on you. This word glory is kabod, is glory, his honor, his abundance, his riches, his honor, his splendor, his dignity, his reputation, and his reverence shall be seen on on you, but the Lord shall arise on you. This is March 2020. And his kabod, his splendor, his riches, his honor, his dignity, the reputation of the Lord has risen upon you. The glory of his riches has risen upon you. The honor, the weight of him has risen upon you. Verse four, and the unsaved, the word Gentiles is unsaved, shall come to your light. This is March 2020. And the unsaved shall come to your illumination. They shall come to, this word uh, is in, in Hebrew is or. They shall come to your happiness. They shall come to the light of your prosperity. They shall... <clears throat> Come to the light of your instruction. They shall come to the light of your face. The unsaved, those who are in darkness. Remember that gross, dark cloud? They're going to come to your light. What light is like that? The glory of the Lord and the kings to the brightness of your rising, to the shining of your dawning. That's what that means. So in 2020, God is saying the obscurity is on the earth and a dark cloud is upon the people. This is your time of dawning. This is the time of the rising of the light in the earth. This is the time of the rising of God coming upon you so that you rise and give him glory. This is March 2020. Verse four, lift up thine eyes all around you and see. Lift up your eyes all around and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to you. 
Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Then shall you see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. And the forces, that word forces in Hebrew, it means strength, might, efficiency, wealth, ability um, shall, of, the Gentile, of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So when it says your heart shall fear, it's not talking about, you know, oh, I'm scared. It's talking about be in awe and it shall be enlarged because the abundance of the sea, the sea is the nations, shall be converted unto thee and the forces, the power of the unsaved, the Gentiles in the Old Testament is just those who don't know God, those who are not in the family of God. And the forces, the power shall come unto you and the multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephath and they from Sheba shall come. So he's showing you the nations. He's showing you what's coming from all parts of the seas and bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. They are drawn to the light that has risen. This is March 2020. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered to, unto thee. The rams of Neboeth shall minister unto you. They shall come up with acceptance of mine altar and I will glorify the house with my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves through their windows? Surely, verse 9, the isles shall, islands shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel because he have glorified thee. Drop down to verse 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto thee the forces or the power of the Gentiles or the unsaved that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yes, the nation shall be utterly wasted. Go down to verse 16. 15, we'll go with 15. Whereas there has been forsaken and hated so that no man went through thee, I will make you an eternal excellency. This is March 2020. I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. This is, this is your title. This is your identity in the earth. You shall also suck the milk of the Gentiles. That is their wealth. You shall suck the breast of kings. That is influence. You shall know that I, the Lord, am thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Verse 17. For brass, I will bring gold. And iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. I'm going to stop right there. This is your seat. This is, this, is, this is your seat of identity in the earth. So we just cannot say, arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We need to understand why this is happening. We need to understand what God is saying when he is saying this unto us. A deep darkness has covered the earth and a thick cloud of darkness the people. And so they're looking for the light of God in the realm of the earth. And so that's why God is saying, now, 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 your light is rising. Now, now, now. Now the glory of God is upon you. Do not put on, do not put on what the unsaved is putting on. That God is saying that there is a mighty distinction. There is a plumb line that has been set in the earth. A line has been drawn in the sand, says God, according to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 through the whole chapter. Praise the Lord. Do y'all see this? The Lord is saying there is a line of distinction between you and them. The Lord is saying that my my light is upon them. The Lord is saying that don't dim your light. Don't smush your light. Don't put your light out. And so here's the thing. Many of you guys have been seeing and sensing something different. But then because of the doom and the gloom, because of the uncertainty, you put down what God is showing you. 
God is saying, you, you feel a lightness, you feel a joy that's springing up in your soul. And, and, and you feel like, well, I look out in the world and everybody's scared. I feel like an outlier. The father is saying, according to Isaiah chapter 60, here are the outliers. You are the outlier. You are the difference. And so the father is saying, well, who, the, those who are under the bell curve, those who are of the majority, those who don't understand what is going on, the father says, illumination is with the outlier. I pray y'all see this. Illumination is so you people will be drawn to you. Things are going to be drawn to you. You're going to show up and yeses are going to be coming from everywhere. Listen, for some of you guys, this is your defining moment. For some of you guys, this is a moment of distinction in the time of your life. God is saying, I'm moving you and maneuvering you away from what was never for you. And I'm placing you in the seat. I'm placing you in the kingdom. I'm placing you and putting with you a royal diadem. I have placed you in a place of royalty and rulership in the realm of the earth. God is saying that I put a light in you and I have established you according to what I told you in days of old. What I told you, your grandmama used to prophesy over you and you used to go to church when you were five and six and people will point you out and say there's something different about this child. There's something different about this one and you've been hearing it all of your life. God says you are at the defining moment. God says I break off of you that which cannot stand with you in this season of reigning. My God. This is the season of the reigning of the illuminary ones, the illuminaries, the lights in the earth, according to the word, according to the scripture. This is the season where we shall see the strong arm of God arise upon the chosen ones who are the chosen ones. The whosoever will decide to push through in belief. The whosoever will decide to push through in faith and say, God, I believe what you said about me. God, I believe you're a good God only. God, I believe believe that you're a great God only. God, I believe you're a good, good father only. God, I believe you're sustaining power only. God, I believe you're the provider only. God, I believe I'm above only and never beneath because you said it and you spoke it. God is saying for the whosoever wills, I'm getting ready to push you over the edge, but baby, you're not going to fall to the ground and splatter. You're getting ready to see that you're about to soar, says God. This is the season of takeoff. This is the season of ascension, says God. This is the season where the bright ones begin to take flight, says God. Arise and shine. Your light has come. God says, I will make you a watchtower in the earth. God says, I will make you a lighthouse in the earth. God says, you shall see that many shall come and they shall uh, 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 come and they shall say, what must I do? And you shall see that people will come and begin to follow. They are not following you, but they are following the light that I have placed and come and caused to come upon you in this day and this time. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do not be hesitant. This is the time to press in, says God. This is the time to seek my face about what is to be released in September. God says, now is the time where I'm pouring you into the month of September. I'm pouring you into 2021 and 2022. God says, come on, don't stay here with what is going on but I open unto you a vision. I open unto you and I make plain what is happening in the earth and what are the next steps in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't mean to yell at y'all. So I'm not going to sit up here and I'm going to pray for healing for the coronavirus. Baby, you are always healed. I'm not going to pray for, for about doom and gloom and dismay in the earth. Why? Because you are not of the earth. I'm not going to pray about those things because you are the called ones to humanity. You are the ones who are to rise and to preach and proclaim what thus saith the Lord. I need you to get up and release the word of the Lord. It is not just for one or for a few, but it's for all of us to get up and speak speak and say, oh speaking spirit, what is the word of the Lord to speak and release, come on into the nations, into the economy to say that this is a new era, this is the era of God this is the day of the Lord I need everybody to get up and to begin to shake yourself in the spirit of the Lord, shake yourself oh intercessor, shake yourself oh prophetic voice, shake yourself oh proclaiming voice, shake yourself oh worshiping spirit and begin to speak and say, what God has put in your belly to speak and say, arise and shine, your light has come. 
Hallelujah. And the glory, the glory, the glory, the kabod of God, the glory, the glory. Go back to uh, chapter 59. I have put my word. My spirit is upon you. And I put my word in your mouth and your seed's mouth and your seed seed's mouth. And it shall be there until eternity. It shall not depart. You have in you the sound of God, the word of the Lord, the works of God for this time and dispensation. Oh, Jesus, we bless you today. We bless you today because the church is excited. The bride is excited. We bless you, God, that the quarreling and the quabbling in the body of Christ will cease and desist. We point our prophetic finger at the bride and we say, shut it down and shut it up. We decree that the sound of worship will begin to be released in the in the, in the realms of the earth. We decree and declare that in the nighttime, oh God, you will begin to cause people to get up and begin to worship and there will be a worship upon the earth. We don't have time to be with the gossipers of the news. We don't have time to set our ear to the sound of the earth or the ground. We set our ear to the many-breasted one. We set our ear to the mouth of God. We set our ear and position our ear toward the throne of God. Release your word unto us, O God. Release your word. We consume ourselves with the rhythm of the word. We consume ourselves with the sound of heaven in the name of Jesus. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. And so we separate ourselves today. We say we are the called out ones. We say that we are the sent ones to a particular population in a particular place in a particular time to set forth a particular potential. We decree and we declare that we reject and we evict every report that is not of God. Every report that is doom and gloom and gossip that has been set forth and sent forth from the camp of the enemy. We brush it off. We put it out. We anoint our door. We anoint the door of our ear. Take your oil and anoint your ear. Take the oil and anoint your mouth. Take your oil and anoint your eyes. From this point on, for the rest of 2020, we set our faculties. Come on. We set our faculties for the prophetic. We set our faculties for the prophetic on God. We look to the hills from whence come our help. And that's the only place we look. We set our ear for to whence comes our help. And that's where we position in our ear. We set our mouth in the position of heaven and that's where our mouth is seven is set. We dial in to the frequency of God. We dial in to the frequency of the word. We dial in to the frequency of revelation and we release information. We become Fox News. We become Heaven's News. We become the news stations in the earth for the economy and for the mountains in the earth. We decree and we declare that as the gates are changing hands that we set as porters and we decree and declare and we usher in and we hold out that which should not come in to the earth realm in the name of Jesus. Oh God calls us to be sensitive. Oh God calls us to be plugged in. Oh God calls us to set with you. Oh God calls us to walk with you. Oh God calls us to commune with you deeper in this season never than we have before that we will not be swayed. We will not uh, be tossed to and fro. We, our focus will not be shifted with the wind, but our focus will be on you and you alone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I just pray over the homes of your people. I thank you, Father, for the anointing that is set. I thank you, Father, for the anointing that is set. I thank you, Father, for the angels that are stationed. I thank you, Father, for the release of the word. I thank you, Father, for the release of revelation. I thank you, Father, for the release of revelation over the homes of your people in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I bless you that you didn't move them before their time. Many of you are wondering why haven't you moved yet? Many of you are wondering why I hadn't moved into my my house yet or why hadn't changed districts yet God says now you see now you see what the hold up was now you understand it wasn't because you were doing something wrong or you missed it in prayer or the prophet missed it you didn't understand that I had to set you there so that the place could become consecrated so that the zip code wouldn't be overtaken God says now you see the assignment God says now you see when you walk around this neighborhood and you begin to pray and decree as you begin to release the word of the Lord that coronavirus and every other virus has no right in the neighborhood that divorces and runaway children and abducted children will not enter into the zip code God says that's why I couldn't move you out of the zip code so fast you didn't understand and if I told you what was getting ready to happen you may have got scared and ran 
Amen. So I just kind of sat with you and I kind of sat on you and, and you were wondering why I wasn't speaking. So God says, now you see. Pick up the assignment, says God, and run with it. God says, pick up the assignment and begin to prophesy. God says, pick up the assignment and don't stop praying. God says, pick up the assignment at Kotayashi. Now you know, and now you see, says God. Now you know why your children still had to be at that school. Now you know why your children had to still be on those school buses. Now you know, said, because God watches over his word. And that covenant that's in your house, it stretches to the school. That covenant that's in your house, it stretches to the Walmart. That covenant that's in your house, it stretches to the church houses. Now you see, says God. Pick up, pick up, pick up your assignment, says God, and begin to run in this season. This season is going to be over before you know it. Listen, I know what they are saying. I know what they are saying about this thing. Listen and listen well. It is going to vanish. The same way it popped in, it is going to vanish literally into thin air air. It's going to vanish. But listen, there's going to be some things that come behind it and then that's going to disappear. And there's going to be some things that come behind it and that's going to disappear. According to Isaiah chapter 60, there is a darkness on the earth and there is a cloud over the people. And so God says, don't get so caught up with this thing. It's getting ready to vanish. It's getting ready. Listen, it's getting ready to disappear. It's the same way it came in it's getting ready to go out. God says you've got to move with me or you're going to be caught up in the confusion like everybody else. You are the called out ones. Stick with me and stay with me and you will maneuver. God says, do you see the people you are leading? Do you see the people who you are pioneering? Do you see the people who are behind you? Pick up your assignment and run, says God. Hallelujah. Pick up your assignment and run. God says this is a year where you will not be caught off guard. God says I stopped time, so to speak, so that you can begin time. There are some things that have to get pushed out during this time. God says submit, 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 submit. Turn off everything and plug in. Turn off everything and turn up the volume in the realm of the spirit and begin to push out and create. Hallelujah. Because when this vanishes, when this vanishes, you're going to walk into the room of opportunity and you better be ready, says God. Because if you're not, that's on you. If you're not, you're going to have to give an account for that. God says, set yourself down and get ready. The summer is going to be explosive. Mark this word. Time stamp it. The summer is going to be explosive. You're going to look around and it's going to seem like there is just... um. Praise report after praise report. And it's going to be like, I didn't even see this coming. I didn't even pray for this. You were looking for one thing and God gave you 10 contracts. You were looking in one area and God blew the top off another area and you just walked right in. You didn't even see it coming. Johiza, I don't even know if you have began to bless God that God held up the Olympics for you to get into it. I don't even know if you began to bless God when I saw that the Olympics were held up. I begin to bless God. God is faithful. He is faithful. He held them up for you to get there. My God, our God is good. Can nobody tell me that our God is not watching over us to perform his good pleasure in us? Can nobody not tell me? So listen, y'all better get it together. We got to get it together. We got to get it together because God says in the summer, it's getting ready to be explosive. You better be nimble and you better be flexible because God says, listen, some of you guys are going to up and move, up and move, up and move because what God is getting ready to put in your lap. Listen, it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. God says that you have already got to get your ear to my breast so that when the frequency or the sound of this thing is released, when this sound is released, it's already a sound that's been in your belly. It's a sound that's been in your prayer closet. It's a sound. And I didn't maybe not been able to see all of it, but I'm familiar with the sound. And so when that sound is released, God says, you better pack your boxes. You better get up and go. Because I'm telling you, your assignment has been released. And this brook will have dried up. You will not have time to linger in 2020, says God. It'll be the time 
where you cross over and you cross into and you will begin to plant and you will begin to be fruitful right away, says God in the name of Jesus. Manda Sokota, Renda Bokoshe. You don't have time to be suspicious. You ain't got time to side eye. You ain't got time to call every prophet in the book. You've got to know because your breast, your ear was to the breast of God. Your ear was to the mouth of God. You were already dialing in to the sound of God. You're already going to have to know, says the Father. You have got to come out of the panic room and you have got to be stationed, come on, in the field and begin to plant. This is not the time to panic. This is the time to plant. I ain't talking about money. Listen. I am talking about ideas. I am talking about planting business. I'm talking about planting time. I'm talking about making contact. Whatever God is telling you to do, plant that thing. Put your hand on it quickly, says God. God is holding up things so that we can catch up. Rarely does he do this. We are standing in an unprecedented time in our times. We've never seen anything like this. The whole world is shut down. The whole, everything has stopped. God says you better run. God says you better sprint. God says you better fly. Because when everything starts back up, God says you will be in a different position than when everything started. Because I gave you time. I I cause acceleration and momentum. I cause everything to slow down so that you could catch up. I cause everything to shut down so that you could spring forth, says God. Think it not strange that we're in spring and this thing is spring up. God says, think it not strange that we're in spring and this thing is springing up. You've got to see me in this, says God. Don't see what's happening. Don't get caught up what's happening. Understand that this is the springing forth of the bride. This is the springing up of the time of the bride, says God in the name of Jesus. Manda soko randa bakushe rukunda maso netebe shu. So God, I thank you. God, I thank you that the family of God. God, I thank you for the brothers and sisters in Christ that we are not rocking and walking in fear. No, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. I break fear in the name of Jesus. You have no right here. We take no covenant with you. We sit not at the table with you. We not allow you on our territory any longer. We Psalms ninety one the rest of this year. We call this year blessed and good. We head not at this year. We understand that the blessing of the Lord is upon this year. God has sanctioned us and given us official documents to go in the territory and build. Come here Nehemiah and Nehemiah saw and heard that the wall was burnt and it was broken down and so he got the paperwork. He got the official paperwork to go and build in the time of ruin and so we say this is for us. We've got the paperwork. We've got the royal documents. We have got the official documents to go and build in the time of ruin. Go and build in the time of ruin. Go and build in the time of ruin. And though people may not understand, and though there may be taunting and plots, God says, I am giving you the official documents. If they try to shut you down, I will cause you to build faster. If they try to thwart my plan, God says, I will fortify you even the more. Go and build. Go and build in the time of ruin. Go and build in the time of drought. Go and plan. Come in. Come here, Isaac. In the time of drought, says God. This is the pattern of God. This is what God specializes in. When man would say no, God says go. When man would say, oh no, oh no, God says, oh yes and go. Oh yes and plant. Go forth because this is how we will know that I am God. This is the distinction. Man will go by the pattern of nature. God says you will go by the pattern of the supernatural. Man will go by the pattern of nature. God says you will go by the pattern of the supernatural. People will look at your harvest and they will believe. People will look at what comes up and they will say this has to be God and so that is the pattern of your life. You cannot walk with the pattern of man. You cannot walk according to the pattern of nature. You must walk according to the pattern of the supernatural. You must walk according to the pattern of faith. You must walk in line with the pattern of God. How can two walk together say they agree? God is holding your hand tight and he's saying I'm not going to let you go and you're saying to him I'm not going to let you go and Until you bless me, until you sanction me, until you approve me to go and build in the time of ruin.
my God. And so, Father, tonight, today, we bless you. We honor you, God, because you have put fire on our feet. You have placed fire upon our hands. You have put fire upon our heads. And so, God, we thank you that as of this moment in the earth, I see a wheel turning. Manda Soko. I, guys, I see a wheel turning. And it's starting off real slow. It's a, it's a huge wheel. And I see that it was to have stopped. It wasn't moving anymore. But I see that God is saying that there are people in the earth that he is calling and calling to arise and to pray. And the wheel, this wheel is beginning to turn in the earth. God says, as we begin to keep praying and moving and going and planting and doing, this wheel is going to gain momentum. The kingdom is making traction. The kingdom is expanding. The kingdom in your home is expanding. The kingdom in your body is expanding. The kingdom in your family is expanding. The kingdom in your mind is expanding. The kingdom in your business is expanding. And so we say yes, God. Tonight we release another sound of yes. We ask you, God, to anoint our yes. We ask you, God, to anoint our going. We ask you, God, to anoint our voices. We ask you, God, to anoint our eyes. We ask you, God, to anoint us, to anoint us, to march in this season and not relent and not repent because we are moving according to the pattern of Almighty God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, Father, you are so amazing. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for this track that we are trekking. We thank you for this. We thank you for this. We bless you for this month of March. We bless you for this time in the earth. We bless you for every nation. We bless you for every country. We bless you for every county. We thank you that we are standing in a time of precedent. We are standing in a time of demarcation in the realm of the earth. Oh, what a time to be alive. Oh, what a time to experience you. Oh, what a time to work for you. Oh, what a time to evangelize for you. Oh, God, what a time. Thank you for allowing us to be alive this day, this hour, this season, this era. What a time. Hallelujah. My God, in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I didn't mean to yell at y'all. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm just excited. I'm excited. Listen, I need you guys to back away and say no. If God didn't tell you to plug into that, don't. I'm not even addressing some stuff anymore. I'm not. I don't need to know what cities are shut down, what, what, what state. I don't need to know. I'm, I don't care about the shutdown. I care about the come up. <laughs> I care about the come up. I, I care about what, what the kingdom is doing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm consuming myself with what God, with what God, with God is doing. That's it. Everybody else, you can take, uh, uh no, that's it, Megan, get excited. I am so excited about this season. I cannot explain it. I understand that we're getting ready to walk into things that we would have never got to do. Chandra, listen, you better start blogging. You need to do what God's telling you to do without any level of repentance, without any level of hesitation, because God is saying, I will put prophetic wind upon your forecasting. And when the businesses come back up, people will call you in to give them uh, information and revelation. God says it doesn't have to make sense. He just needs you to be obedient. He needs you to be obedient. God is saying to stop playing it safe. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop playing it safe. That's what God says. I didn't mean to yell. Yes, I did. Stop playing it safe in Jesus name. Do it. Now is the time to fling off timidity. Now is the time to move in courage. So what if they laugh? So what if they have something to say? So what? So what? So what? Because you getting ready to laugh all the way to the bank. You going to dance to the bank. You going to dance as you're building developments. You going to dance. You going to dance. You going to laugh at me, boo-boo. Laugh at me, baby. Because that laughter don't mean a thing. Come on, get up and do all that God is telling you to do. Fling off timidity and put on courage. 
fling off timidity and put on courage. Come on, history shakers. Come on, history rewriters. Come on, heavenly forecasters. Come on, transcribers of heaven. Fling off timidity and speak. Fling off timidity and create. Fling off timidity and present yourself and present the report of the Lord. Come on. I'm, I'm in the old job. My bad. I mean, I don't want to offend you, but I, I do mean to yell. I don't want to listen. I, I don't want to offend you. I don't want to offend nobody. I don't want to offend nobody. I'm talking to myself too. Hallelujah. Listen. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is your time. Isaiah 60, arise and shine for your light has come. It is the time. It is the time. No fear, Chari. Listen, I know right now people are getting laid off. It looks like hiring has stopped. You can write this on a check and you can take it to the bank. This is what the Lord says. And I was in prayer today about this. This is what thus saith the Lord. I'm trying to make it sound all official and deep. Thus saith the Lord, Jehovah in Zion. Is that, does that sound deep? Does that sound deep? This is what God said when I was in prayer, guys. <laughs> he said, business as we know it is over. This is going to be the season of the consultant. This is going to be the season of the consultant. If you don't have $100 to package yourself in a business as a consultant, the father says to borrow from your neighbors. To, this ain't the season to have no pride. This is not the season to have pride. This is not the season to have pride. What you need ask for. If you've got to ask 20 people for $5, then you ask 20 people for $5 to get your $100. Put yourself in a business. The Father says that this is the season of the consultant. Why? Businesses are not going to be able to carry employees as such. When they don't carry employees or certain things that you don't have to carry. When you don't carry certain things, then you have more money to spend. The father says that when we are able to hire consultants, consultants will hire other consultants. And so now businesses will tap into your network. They tap into your network. And so they pay you to create your own network to get the job done for them. Y'all can take this to the bank. And so the father says that this is the season, the rise of the consultant. And so businesses, Fortune 500 companies will be downgraded. <laughs> Fortune 500 companies will be downgraded. They will be downgraded. There is a, a Fortune 500 companies will file bankruptcy, whereby which they will uh, rebuild. They will take some time to restructure. In that restructuring period, they will look for consultants, experts in certain fields where they drop the ball. Are you an expert in customer service? I know that doesn't seem like a thing, but it, that's why certain companies fail and flail because their customer service was trash for too long. Come here, Comcast. Hallelujah. Anyway. The father says that if this is your thing and he's been saying to you to get into the customer service, if you are HR, if you are HR, human resources, and you know a thing or two, the father says now is the time to begin to form the business and to create, create yourself a network. Now is the time to uh, reach out to other people that you once worked with. Now is the time to create a network and say, hey, listen, this is what we're getting ready to do. I need your number. I need your resume. You're part of my team. You're part of my team. You will already have put together uh, different sorts of packages. That's what you're supposed to be doing right now. You will understand what I need to pay everybody else. And so you will know what you need to ask for and what you need to command. This is not the season for when they say, what do, what, what do we pay for your services? You say, let me get back to you. You say, no, for three months, it's going to be $50,000 and you will not flinch and you will not blink and neither will they, and they will pay you and you will pay everybody that's on your team what they are worth. Why? Because the come up is for all of us. The come 
come up. Everybody on your team comes up. This is the era of teams. This is the time of teams. And everybody on your team shall come up. We all shall prosper. Oh, what is that called? Where we have all things in common. Me and my team shall have all things in common. So that means when we put our heads together, we all shall bring to the table a complete and whole package. There shall not be jealousy. There shall not be shenanigans, but we all shall be paid. Why? Because we understand that when the team disperses, we go and we assemble with yet another team and yet another team. We are building networks all over the earth. Do you see the map right now and it being lit up? It being lit up? Arise and shine. Your light has come. In business, in ministry, listen, this is the time. Right now, you need to be saying, what can I consult in? What am I good at? What am I, what do I know? If you are a stay at home mom and you've been homeschooling your kids right now, you would be making money hand over fist, hand over fist. Because there's a bunch of people. I'm in, I'm blessed to be in a County where we are online, but the teachers have no idea what they're doing. They were not ready for this. That's, that's what I do. I consult K through 12. So I know what I'm looking at. They have no idea what they're doing. We're getting 80 emails a day. We shouldn't need 80 emails a day. This should have, all you need to do is kick it out a couple times. If you are a homeschooling mom, hand over fist, you could be making money right now. Because everybody's at home, homeschooling. And so many people are frustrated. So many people, they're K, uh, K through fifth. They may not even be doing nothing. Parents are responsible. They have no idea what they're supposed to be doing right now. And, and parents are afraid, my child is falling behind. Don't let this happen again. What can you do as a consultant? What can you do? You better get it ready because I'm telling you, corporations, this is the season of consultants. The time of 1099s. So anyway... I pray y'all heed this. I pray that you guys are excited. I pray that you are just jumping up and down for joy in your spirit, man. And you are not worried about whether or not you need to disinfect your nostrils when you go out into the world because you already understand that this had to happen because of what God is doing in the realm of the earth. Listen, 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 Linda. Yes, the season of consultants. Season of consultants. Come on. And so the people, that the, the, the educators who were on here, you should be reaching out to other educators and you guys should be, y'all should be, this should be the rise of, I'm an instructor, but I'm also a PD expert, professional development expert in this particular area. Let me help you get ready for when we have to do online learning. Let me help you get ready. Let me help you. Let's do this. Let's travel around the United States. Let's do this. And how do I know that school systems will pay for it? Because because I do it. They will pay you for it and they will pay teachers for it faster. Come on. Come on. I pray y'all are listening. And whatever you do, if y'all if you understand phone systems, what customer service, if you understand sales, you can train teams. They're going to be getting rid of key positions in Fortune 500 companies. If you're in a key position and they get rid of you, lift your hands to heaven, open your mouth, and let out a loud sound. Because God is saying, I'm taking the roof off. I'm removing the cap of your salary. Where you had to come for 40 hours, you had to work this job, and they told you what you were going to make in a year. God says, I will allow you to make what you were making in a year. I will allow you to make it in one quarter, in one quarter of a year. And you could do this over and over. So you have the potential of making four times what you were making working one job. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Right? And Chandra, if you see so much for restaurants, now is the time this season where you say, I say so much for restaurants. Come on, come on, come on. While restaurants are shut down right now, it's non-essential business. That non-essential business is shut down right now. They are losing revenue. How are they going to recoup revenue? This is where you slide in their DMs. 
listen, Linda, this is where you slide in their DMs. And you say, hey, my name is Chandra, and I have a plan. Come on, guys. Come on, Sandrika. Come on. If, if, if you are in a key position and you feel like God is saying you have, you have two ways you can look at this. Are you losing a position or are you gaining momentum? Are you gaining momentum? Are you gaining in your industry? Listen, this is so exciting. So exciting. So exciting. Jesus, so exciting. Yep, sliding them DMs, boo. Sliding in, man. Looking for no man. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> we looking for that paper. <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> listen. Listen, assemble a team. Get you a team that are like-minded people. Get you a team that they all do something. Get you, get people on the team. Get people on your team. Yep, you're gaining a new direction. And so we just bless the new direction that you guys are headed in. We bless that direction. This is a blessing only. This is a blessing only. Yep, yep. Sandrika, you already know what's on you. You already know what the Lord has said. This is the season. Because honestly, a lot of times for you guys who have that paycheck and you've got those benefits, you get really comfortable. And God is saying that that was really just your classroom. And if you get comfortable there, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you dearly. And this is how we see. Listen, a lot of people right now are okay. Why? Because you've been on the struggle bus for a minute. So if the country slides into a recession, you're okay because you're recession proof because you have learned to live, live on a little. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So, but the higher you are, the more that you've had freedom and liberty in finances. And then all of a sudden, everything is taken, the harder the fall. If you're not ready, it can, it can hurt. You, you can really spiral. But God is saying, don't. God is saying, I, I put you there so that you can see what you were made of. Make some contact. Sit in the, 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 the seat and learn some things. And now I'm letting you loose. Many of you guys are Fortune 500 companies all within yourself. But you get comfortable. We get comfortable. It's nice breaking in $7,000 a month. I ain't got to think about nothing. I put them bills on auto pay. I'm good. All of a sudden, it stops. What am I going to do? But And for other people, you are so good because you've been living lean for a long time. And God says now, you've got to change your mind too. Because living lean could hurt you because you could put on the spirit of poverty. Live, there's a difference between living lean and poverty, and poverty. When you've lived lean, it's easier to build. It's easier to build in lean times because you understand how to speak the language. You understand how to navigate the economy. You understand some things, if that makes sense, right? And so, but if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm scared. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Then that's really a spirit of poverty. God is saying, I just taught you how to be lean because you're building a business. And so now you're going to have to live off half of that income while we move through this and we navigate through this and you come out on the other side and you are a viable business being strengthened in an economy that is being strengthened, right? Right? That's right. That's right. So listen. Don't get comfortable in the position or with the position. God is showing that to us now. He's showing that to us now. Hold everything with the light hand. Hold everything with the light hand. Everything. Because things could change at the drop of a hat. We've never seen interest rates at, at zero. At zero. This is unprecedented. Right? This is unprecedented. So... Get excited because God is saying, what you could not get in, I'm giving it to you. I'm allowing you to walk in and access, access, accessibility. Amen. 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 So I love you guys. This was fun. I pray you guys are excited. And when I see you guys on Facebook, you will not be of the sound of gloom and doom. You will be of the sound that is saying, hey, get ready. Stretch out your tent pegs. You'll be like, hey, what are you reading? What are you doing? What are you building? You'll be like, hey, come on, people. Come on, bride. Come on, bride. Iron your dress. Come on, bride. Put it on. It's time to get there. It's time to get there. It's time to get there that you will be pushing the people to the next place. Right? Right? Come on. Listen, Linda. All right. So I got to hop on another call. I love you guys. And um, we'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. prayer. Amen.
Amen.